Hi, welcome to GalaxyCon Live. That was my other computer making some weird noises. Um, <laughs> I'm Mike Broder, president of GalaxyCon. With me is my co-host, Patty Hawkins. Hi, Patty. Hey, everybody. How are you doing? Uh, we have some awesome guests tonight. Our good friend Richard Horvitz is here. You know, Richard, Star of Invader Zim, Angry Beavers, Great Adventures of Billy and Mandy, and also the iconic 90s comedy Summer School. And he's dragging along his buddy Dean Cameron, also from Summer School, Chainsaw, Star mm -hmm. of Ski Patrol, Ski Patrol 2, um, Rockula. Uh, they came from out of space. Uh, and the the Fast Times, the TV show, uh, Richard and Dean have been, have been producing the Some Kind of Joke web series and posting new uh, new uh, episodes every day online. It's really funny and short and quick and really, uh, really uh, punchy. So without further ado, let's welcome Richard and Dean. There they are. Hi, guys. Hey. Hello. Hey. Or should How I? Are you? Hi, Dean. Short and quick was, uh, it's a title of my sex tape. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Uh, or should I call you uh, Michael and Fredo? Michael we and are Fredo. Michael and Fredo. That is true. So for those that don't know, you guys are doing this web series, uh, some kind of joke, which you guys started, I don't know, a few a week and a half ago, right? Two weeks ago? I well, think 11 episodes. So the the there's a history to this some kind of joke, and I'll let Dean, Dean tell it because it was his idea. Go ahead. Uh, we started a couple years ago actually shooting with – you know, a single camera, uh, uh, classic jokes as narrative short films. Mm -hmm. And we did a few of those sort of to, to see if it would work and it worked, but it's time consuming and expensive. So we stopped. But when this all happened, I was taking my daily drive of despair. And uh, I thought, hey, well, I, we could do jokes on Zoom and maybe that'll work. And so we did one and had so much fun that we just kept doing them. Yeah, it's something that we do for our, I mean, we do it for ourselves. We had a yeah. lot of views in the beginning, but apparently people <laughs> are getting a little tired of them. I don't know. But um, one of the main our, things. Our audience, like, our audience is getting more selective. Yes, yeah, it's getting more selective. Kind of that, but, yeah. but um, you know, the main thing is, is that we're on all different platforms. We're on Twitter. We're on uh, Facebook. We're on uh, YouTube. But what we really want to do is, like, drive all the fans over to our YouTube channel, which is called Some Kind of Joke. And it's on, um, it's on YouTube, some kind of joke. And uh, Dean, you know, Dean had this idea because Dean's directing now, which is one of the other things that um, we should talk about is that uh, Dean wanted, originally when we did this uh, some kind of joke thing, he came to me with this idea. Uh, he said, hey, do you want to join me on this? We'll, we'll co-produce it together. And if you look at our early work on them, um, it's, Full production quality. We had a you know cinematographer and everything, and it was just to show narratives. It also highlighted and um, showed uh, Dean's amazing directing ability, and that was one of the main was one of the main reasons that we uh, we got involved doing it. We did, you know, one of the things that Dean and I, if we get we get bored or you know nothing's going on in our lives, we'll hey let's go do something, and we'll rent a studio for an afternoon and, and a green screen, and we'll just shoot a bunch of sketches and. So yeah, we started uh, it, 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 the, the the first thing we did was this thing called. Can I? I wonder how uh, is this PG or no? no. It's, it's, uh, it's we called Dickhead Fireman. Oh, Dickhead Fireman. Uh, yeah. And we just got a bunch of friends together at a green screen studio and in in fireman outfits. Fireman outfits and said, "Let's just improv the worst firemen in the world because they're so revered." We thought, "What if they were horrible people?" So they're taking pictures of themselves in front of the fire and yeah. upset by the the bell. Just real quick stuff. So yeah, they've got their people. cell phones. They can't get any signal as the as the the house burns behind them. Yeah. Um, and stuff like that. Yeah, and there you can you can look that up also. Is that a separate channel, Dean? Yeah, that's yeah, fireman. It's also dickhead, yeah. Yeah. Cleverly yeah. titled dickheadfireman.com. So, yeah. Right. I, but we, um, but it, uh, some kind of joke ended up with us doing a short film called The Bug, which is based on great classic joke uh, where I got Richard to dress up in a bug costume. Uh, oh, yeah. It's in the back. Did, I think I had yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, you do, I, I have it hanging in the garage, Richard. Oh, oh, the poster. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so the short film, and so. It was originally just going to be a, some kind of joke, but it ended up being so good it we entered in film festivals and won a bunch of awards and stuff. So uh, there's only two on that one, but we've got like eight awards now, so it's pretty cool. 
awesome. Um, hey. We were we were talking. Patty and I were talking earlier, and we we're going over all your, you guys as. Uh, stuff um mostly yours dean because you know richard we know everything he's right. done we were talking about you know talked about that summer school and ski patrol and you know I, I, I mean i'm sorry ski school I'm sorry. <laughs> it's the same movie it's just all the same movie yeah uh rockula and uh and he was telling me about your directing of a uh of a of a play uh patty you wanna oh uh, yeah it? yeah uh, talk, tell us a little bit about uh Bukowsical. Bucalcical. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I was I worked with this theater company in LA for years called Naked uh, Sacred Fools. Sacred Fools. Thank Fools. you. And this friend of mine, Gary Stockdale, had and another a writer named Spencer Garrett had written these three songs, sort of based on Charles Bukowski's life, but show tune versions, and they were hilarious. And so. I thought, what if we were, we could do this as a show, like a short show. And the conceit was that it was a backer of this really horrible theater company with this egomaniac producer doing a backer's audition for this show called Bukowsical, <laughs> based on Charles Bukowski's life. <laughs> and it was just great. It was just, so, it was so good. And uh, yeah, it, it, it Does was- Does this really exist anywhere <clears throat> on film? No, it doesn't exist anywhere. God damn it. We got very close to getting shut down by his estate. Um, and the wife was very upset with us. And, and we had to make sure that it's a, not authorized by Charles Bukowski <laughs> and stuff like that. So yeah, but it, was, it was a great time. It was a really good show. There, there's still some, there's some uh, sizzle reel stuff from when, you oh, took it to, yeah, from when you took it to New York Fringe. The sizzle reel is still up on YouTube. Oh, cool. And uh, I, I was, uh, I'm a friend of... I found out about it because a friend of mine was uh, one of your cast in that, Matt Garland. Oh, oh, Matt! Oh, Matt was great. Yeah, yeah, that, that it's a way. Small he, world. Yeah, I know, and he was—he really that—that that remains one of his favorite things he did in the, out of that decade. So, thank you so much for casting him. That really—that really still resonates with him. Tell Matt I said hello. He was, My friend wanted absolutely. me to say hello, Harrington M. Lilana. Oh, hi guys. Hello. Speaking of other talent, you worked with Dean uh, since Mike and again, Mike and I are of this generation. We're. Mike and I are a certain age, so we are going to go back to some of you guys' 80s stuff, so forgive us. But don't go worry, we'll get to the 90s stuff for our younger viewers out there. But uh, <laughs> before we get to before we get to the summer school, I just want to talk a little bit about, yeah, you were the Earth 2, uh, I call it, uh, Jeff Spicoli on the Fast Times uh, series, Riff as it was. But you got to work with a great cast on that, especially Ray Walston and Vincent Schiavelli, two of my favorite character actors. It was so nice to work with them. And, you know, I was a huge fan of the movie, and my... I had, I had been roommates with one of the guys who played the surfer buds uh, in when they were doing the movie. So I actually oh, wow. gone, to, gone to the set and I watched the iconic scene where they all spill out of the the VW van with the smoke billowing behind it. Yeah. And this and this guy Jeff used to call the house. And my roommate Eric was I'd say this, who's Jeff? It's like ah oh, this actor Sean. He insists on being called. By the character name the whole time, so it was Sean Penn calling the house, talking to Fran Eric, and it was pretty cool. But yeah, but great cast: Patrick Dempsey, Courtney Thorne Smith, uh, Claudia Wells, who was in Back to the Future. Uh, yeah, Vincent Schiavelli and Ray Walston, just a, a dream cast. It's really cool. Wally Langham, um, yeah. amazing. Oh yeah. yeah, Wally. Yeah, yeah, just gone. So, how did you? How did the two of you get involved with uh, summer school? Well. Uh, Dean, so, Dean was on board before me. Yeah, I mean, coincidentally, so Amy Herkeling was supposed to direct, Amy Herkeling, who directed Fast Times, was supposed to direct Summer School. Really? And Yeah, and she, uh, while we were doing Fast Times, she was talking about it, and she was talking to Patrick and Wally about playing the Chainsaw and Dave characters. And there are these two guys that weigh into the horror movies, and you guys would be great. And I was sitting there going, well, I'd like to be in a movie myself. What about that? <laughs> so ultimately uh, at Paramount, uh, Carl Reiner had another movie that he was going to do and that fell through and Paramount gave him the pick of any script and he liked this summer school script because it was a great script and Amy was out. And then uh, I had done, and Patrick Laberto and Kirstie Alley had done a TV movie with Mark Harmon the year before two years before called the Prince of Bel-Air, not the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Right, yeah. And so he rem remembered me and Jeff Franklin, the writer, knew about me from Amy. And, and so I went in and uh, read with 
I read once with just alone with the casting director, and then I came back and I read with Gary Riley and I, f I keep forgetting his name. He played Mark the Harmon. Big, no, the big brother in <laughs> ET, uh, Robert. Oh, oh, oh. <clears throat> Henry uh, Thomas. No, Robert. Uh, oh, uh, the, the older brother. Robert. Robert, yeah. Robert um, Mc not no Robert McNaught no. God, we, have, we have a schedule to come to Raleigh this year. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so I read with him, I read with him and, and Gary. So Robert's still waiting to see if he got the part or not. But I uh, ended up doing it with Gary. But yeah, so that's how that's how I got involved. So had you guys met prior to summer school? Or did you guys meet on the set? No, the way I I was like literally the last student of the of the regular cast that was cast. And uh, what happened? I was doing a, a TV series at the time called Safe at Home, oh, God, and yeah. um, and I wasn't available to do it. But during a hiatus from shooting that series, I decided I was going to go in because they said, you know, Carl Reiner wants to meet with you. So I went in literally that day. I read with Carl uh, right out of the gate, Carl Reiner. And at the time I finished, he went, get out of here. You're perfect. You got the part. It was like the only time I've ever like booked a part on the spot. Right. And it was from Carl Reiner. So it's like, I felt like Mary Tyler Moore, on, you know, the Dick Van Dyke show. Um, <laughs> but um by the time I joined the rest of the cast, they had already been, uh, they had, Carl had been doing um, a kind of a blocking rehearsal for, the, for oh, that right. entire week. And I joined everyone about a week later. And uh, and then that's the first time I met Dean. Yeah. And and everyone, uh, no, I, I grew up with, uh, with uh, Shawnee Smith. So I knew Shawnee. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, her whole family I knew well. Uh, and that's how we came to be. So did Very you guys, nice. did you guys keep in touch? The whole time afterwards, or you know, we lost. no, there were some years that we probably didn't see each other. We we kind of ran into each other once in a while, I think, yeah. and then uh, we ended up at the same voiceover agency right. in the late late like late mid nineties, mid nineties or yeah. so. Yeah. And from then, we just kind of rekindled our friendship. I mean, um, the people that I've kept in touch with over the years, besides Dean, is Dean Patrick Laberto is also a friend of ours. Uh, Ken Olant is a very good friend of ours. He played the. Uh, the stripper. stripper. Yeah. Um, uh, Shawnee, I've seen here and there. Mark, I still see Mark. I see Mark every couple of months or so. Uh, Kirsty, I ran into in a diner in Silver Lake. That was the last time I saw her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and Carl. And I, I keep in touch with Carl. I see Great. Carl and and, uh, and the executive producer of our, our George. movie, George Shapiro, is a good friend of mine. Yeah. That's great. Oh. Dean, you made a good point about it being such a great script. And yeah, I absolutely I absolutely agree. The movie still holds up. And superficially, I always thought, you know, in long after retrospect, I think, I think the movie's marketed a little bit wrong. I think they try to make it look like a just a, a, t a typical teen romp of that time, like hard bodies and porkies right. or whatever. And no, it's got some really good acidic humor. It's got a lot of profanity and it avoided the R rating and still has a lot of heart in it. It really does. Well, that was the, the issue when we were shooting it. I remember we'd be on the location and people would say, because the script, I mean, the script was really uh, this beautiful script and there was stuff that was missing from the final cut, but yeah. just I, I just love that script. But when we, people would say, oh, what, what's the name of the movie you're doing? Or, or it's called Summer School. And they go, oh, one of those. Like, no, no, not one of those. Yeah. It's, just, it's a Carl Reiner's directing. It's a Paramount film. And it's a big, big like, uh, yeah, it's just some... It, yeah, that was the well, thing. Later, later, I would do one of those movies, but initially, no. It was a, we all we all did those movies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, have a, I have a great, a funny Carl Reiner story uh, about uh, speaking from my audition. And go back. So uh, when I was reading with Gary Riley, Carl gave me this horrible direction, just the worst direction in the world, and I, I like looked at him like that's that's the worst idea I've ever heard. And I thought, well, it's Carl Reiner. I'll give it a shot. And so I did. And it did not land. It was bad. And so we went on anyway. So about two weeks into the shoot, we were waiting around there setting up lights. And, and Carl came over to me and said, remember that uh, that direction I gave you in the audition? I was like, yeah. And he goes, it was really bad. I go, yeah, yeah, it was really bad. He goes, I just wanted to see if you would listen to me because I could tell you're a motherfucker. So <laughs> <laughs> My my most vivid recollection is we were shooting the scene. Uh, we're in the classroom where Courtney Thornsmith is staring outside the window because she wants to go out and surf. And 
I started laughing and then Dean started laughing and then Mark starts laughing and it's her close up and we could not stop laughing at her looking at them. We just, we, we just got, we couldn't laugh. We couldn't stop laughing. I had to keep calling cut. Right. I had to reset. Cause it was, then, it, it, it was like, it was like the third take and she was doing the exact same thing. And she was just staring out a window <laughs> and like, what, 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 just what, what, what are you doing? Here? It was so funny. And it was and such a blank, I mean, she was great. She was a blank surfer girl, Sterling. I kid you not, when they called cut and they said, okay, we're resetting for the next scene, we all ran to our dressing rooms to get out of there as fast as we could. And even Mark went running out and, and Carl came after us and said, hey, hey, you're very bad boys. <laughs> you're very bad boys. Well, the other the other angry story is Mark Harmon had been voted uh, sexiest, sexiest man, man alive by People Magazine that year. Yeah. And so the scene where he walks in with the tie and he's going to teach in his school, I'm off camera and I go, it's the sexiest man alive. And we finished yeah. the cut <laughs> and he chased me out of the building, tackled me and he's like, don't ever say that again. <laughs> he was joking. But yeah. yeah. But, anyway, but, sorry. But, but, but no, that, ra that raises a good the point about when the movie came out. That was, that is Nadir. And, and again, those of you may not remember, if you remember your mom talking about how popular Clooney was in the 90s, that's where Mark Harmon was yeah, through St. Elsewhere and, and yeah. his TV stuff. So, And, you know, I, I Dean uh, will attest to this. Like, Mark is one of the most genuine, nicest, down-to-earth people you'll ever meet. When yeah. we were doing that, I was like, I think at the time I was, um, I think I was like, converting my garage or I was going to just move a bunch of boxes and Mark said, Hey, you want me to come over this weekend and I'll help you. And I was like, yeah, thanks. He says, no, I'm serious. I'll, I'll come over and I'll help you move. I said, no, 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 you don't have to. And he says, no, I can help you with that insulation. You know, the thing, and he, this whole thing about how, you know, the uh, insulation will give you fiberglass and how to get the fiberglass out without, I was like, no, no, it's fine. But to this day, every time I run into him, uh, I'll tell you a very interesting story about Mark. And this is true. About, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, maybe a little bit less, uh, maybe about eight or nine, I don't know. I get, a, I get an email and it says, hey, Richard, it's Mark. Call me at the office. I'm like, Mark, what? So uh, I call up the office. They say, Mark Harmon's office. They said, oh, yeah, it's Richard Horvitz for Mark Harmon. So he said, hey, how you been? And I said, great. And he said, um, listen, you remember those pictures? Do you see that picture right behind me that's framed where the bug is, it's a summer school picture, right? Yeah, yeah. Directly above that chair. Yep. Those were gifts to us um, from Carl Reiner at the cast party when we wrapped. And wow. uh, we all signed them like a yearbook, you know? And Mark said to me on this call not too long ago or eight years ago, hey, um, where you signed your picture, it's you, you like wrote it in like a light red or something and it's fading. Would you meet me in Santa Monica at the frame store? I want you to re-sign it exactly what you wrote. And I said, that's so weird because I've left a space for you where you had not um, signed it because I, I missed wow. you that night. And he said, yeah, bring it. We'll do it. So I meet him in Santa Monica. I hadn't seen him in, in quite a few years. And uh, we were talking about careers. And I said to him, you know, I said, I thought summer school was going to launch me into more film work and everything. And he goes, hey, what are you talking about? I know all about your your animation work. And my kids grew up on your shows. I was like, oh, wow, that was very sweet. So we signed our autographs. And the woman put our frames back together. And I said, oh, but I'm still here. And he said, what do you mean? I said, well, I thought once we did that, I was going to quantum leap back into my on-camera career. <laughs> <laughs> and he laughed. I kid you not, that day, I was cast in uh, The Informant, uh, along with Tony Hale and Matt Damon, also starring Scott Bakula. So I, um, I wrote to Mark and I said, your magic your magic uh, signature got me this job. And he said, no, it's because it's, he goes, it's your acting that got you the job. And I'm just, uh, it's an honor to be your friend. I mean, it was just, he's just so down to earth. I love Mark. He's one of the great. Guys. It's great. I have one final summer school thing. Then we can move on to the other stuff. Yes, uh, let's do it. What, during the, uh, uh, the famous gore scene, which had some really fantastic practical effects. And Rick Baker, yeah. yeah, I mean, they not, really knocked it out of the park. And uh, but just how long did how long did that shoot to particularly take? It was two days, right? Rich? The shoot? Yeah, that was Lucy Lee Flippin was one day. And then yeah. the other day was the uh, just the 
the close up shot. I don't know. We think we, I, oh, no, we did, we did this, we did this, this, this school room in one day, but really? we did, the, yeah, we did the beach scene with the makeup on still okay. the second day. Yeah. Cause that's where you had to eat that eyeball. Remember how many takes we had to do on that? We lost Dean. Where did Dean go? Dean probably lost his connection. He'll have uh -oh. to walk back in. He, he hates that eating that eyeball story. Yeah, he hated it. But he, he had, had to, enough of your, you know what? Right, yeah, I know. I know. He's tolerating. Wait, here he comes. There, there he is. is. All right. I was talking about where you had to eat the eyeball oh, in yeah. that scene. And remember, if you kept going, <laughs> you just, we had to do like, how many takes did we do of that? Not many. They, did, they only had a couple eyeballs and they flavored them for me, which was nice. Oh, that is good. Yeah. An interesting thing about that is that, um, Dean's right. We Rick Baker actually did all our makeup, so we went to the Rick Baker studios right. to, to do it. But my saw blade that I have going through my head was so so tight on my head that when they took it off, I had a dent in my head where it had <laughs> actually it was it was painful. And I was wearing a wig with it on, so it was really cool. nice, nice. Well, again, summer school, I love it. And uh, Richard, your character was the nerd that I was, and Dean, your character was the geek that I aspired to be. Good. My my character was a stretch because I'm normally, you know, nice. the leading uh, guy, you know. Right, yeah. I mean, you're very, very, very uh, yeah. cool. Richard. But boy, it's a you threw up a lot in that movie, too. <laughs> <laughs> and I almost did. You know how many times we rode the um the corks? What was it? At uh, the revolution. It was no, it's Knott's Berry Farm, right? Knott's Berry Farm, yeah. We rode that that thing. It was like the whole park was closed for us, and we rode that thing over and over again. And by the time we got off it, I was feeling pretty sick. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so the uh, so uh, summer school, ironically, uh, it's where I first learned about Texas Chainsaw Massacre because I hadn't seen it yet, and uh, then had to go see Texas Chainsaw Massacre after the fact. You do. Yeah. And then I, you know, was lucky enough to uh, kind of sort of work with Gunnar Hansen on a project once, and then. When I got in the convention world, my buddy had a horror show and I got to meet Gunner again. And he was just the nicest, sweetest guy. Um, Dean, you do a lot of horror conventions, right? Uh, I haven't in a while, but I, I did you used for to. a couple of years. Did you, yeah. ever, did you ever meet Gunner? I or never you? met him. I never did. I, 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 I met um, a couple of years ago and I think he's, he's died since then, but he was uh, one of the brothers. Uh, I don't. I forgot his name. But the oh, joke. The, yeah, the he, 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 he character. Yeah, yeah. My sunny Bono wig. Yeah. You know, I, I was at yeah. Comic Con. I, nice. I was at Comic Con a couple of years ago, and we're promoting um, Enter the Florpus, and Rick Baker was there. I think I told you this. Yeah. And I saw Rick, and he, we were both in two separate junket rooms. And I walked, and I, I, I looked at him, and he goes, "Summer School." He goes, "Come here, I want to take a picture." He was still <laughs> such a huge fan of awesome. Summer School. It was like I couldn't believe he remembered it. You know. How many years ago now did we do that? Ten years ago? <laughs> <laughs> was it ten? Maybe twelve. I think it was like twelve years ago. Yeah, I guess it was about twenty. That do you remember sense. Richard? The last, uh, the last, the, the the production manager was great because the last day of our shoot was at Malibu Grand Prix. <laughs> yes. And I, a friend of mine, my friend Michael, was in in town with me, and we went to. My, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, Malibu Grand Prix, and I brought my. The last day of high school, when I was in high school in Oklahoma, I went to Malibu Grand Prix and I was, well, you know, I suffer from glaucoma. And so I had smoked a lot of marijuana to help with my glaucoma. So I uh, had taken a, a picture of my Malibu Grand Prix license and my I'm just blazing, my eyes are bright red. So anyway, so Michael Blaylock and I took the- our, our What questions. I remember about that was how he, he was getting so mad at us because we kept creeping forward in the cars yeah. do you remember that yeah, guys go back to your marks right. <laughs> and 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 mark was just kept going forward yeah it and he'd so take off and we'd all go yes, around yes and we'd go around they get so mad at us anyway we've talked about summer school for far yes. too long yes. so all right so we, we normally talk about conventions right this is the main truck of our show now dean you've never done one of our shows which no. we have to fix we talked about that earlier um so have you ever have you guys ever done a show together a convention no, I don't we think we ever done a convention too. together. Yeah, we had to fix that. We didn't. No, we did. We did a screening at the at the movie. The new Bev, theater, right? The new Bev, but we haven't done a, a show together. I did one with Kelly Minter and Gary Riley. And Gary Riley, yeah. And yeah, that was it. Yeah, that was. Yeah, it. I know. There's a, for the twentieth. Y'all did a a, a screening, a Q and A, I believe. Yeah, this guy Brian McQuarrie, uh, who is a denizen think, at at. Uh, 
at the new Bev. Yeah. His birthday pre well, what one of his birthday presents was Rockula. He wanted a screening of Rockula, so <laughs> I went to that. And then the other one, he he like asked me to do to come to a summer school, and I called Richard, and, and then Fabia Fabiana ended up going, and, and Robin Thomas and Gary Riley showed up. And the Kelly was Kelly there. Kelly was. I, I don't think Kelly was there, but Patrick was there. Yeah, Patrick was, was there. Cool. Yeah. But it was good to see uh, Gills again. Yeah, yeah. Robin. Yeah, he looks Mike. now, and he looks younger than both of us combined. <laughs> I'm just going to ask Mike a question here. Mike, if we book them, can we please book Fabiana too? Please, yeah, yeah. please. We'll She'll do it. it. She'll do it. She'll do it. Right, Richard's going to set this up for you. Yeah. <laughs> All your hopes and dreams. Yes. <laughs> I had just gotten her out of my adolescent teenage system, <laughs> and and then she shows up in the Austin Powers movies, and then it all comes back. Poor Patty. Um. Anyway, cartoons, Evader Zim, uh, Billy and Mandy, yeah. <laughs> no, so. so uh, right. Speaking of your teenage adolescence, <laughs> get those out of your mind. But Richard, I mean, you gotta, you gotta, like Mark, you know, Mark is. Uh, Telling you that his kids grew up watching you, and you're like, "Oh, Mark's a big star. He's on, yeah. you know, a big show." And and yes, he has a huge audience of people over the age of fifty. But you've got all the young, you know, hip. You know, you got all the kids. You got all the teenagers. You got all the people in their twenties and thirties. Yeah, it's weird because I always remember thinking to myself, "I'm going to eventually get to an age where um, I'm like kids." childhood like they're yeah. now grown with their own kids and mm -hmm. they'll be in a position they'll be in a hiring position and they'll <laughs> want to work with us because oh my gosh and so that's kind of where i am in that phase I'm, i i just did a thing i don't know if you've seen it it's called hell of a boss and it was on youtube by this um this really talented um artist by the name of vivzy pop her name's vivian madrano but she goes by vivzy pop and um she said, hey, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, Billy and Mandy and Invader Zim. Would you do this thing? I'm like, yeah, sure. Why, you know, I go and I do it. That thing had six million views in like two days. Yeah. And now it's, 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 it's like to 16 million or something like that. It's amazing. And it's like, oh, well, they call me Gramps. <laughs> more, wow. more viewers than anything on CBS. Yes. Uh, so. Yeah. Uh, so when was when was Angry Beavers? Like, what was the early one? Was it Angry Beavers that came first? Uh, Power Rangers was my first Power like regular yeah. series, and then but that was more dubbing. The first right. um, first original character that I created was the Angry Beavers. Yeah, right. I had done so, I, mean, I had done guest spots on a lot of other animated shows. So I mean, you've got kids that grew up on that. Oh yeah! Okay. In fact, there's an episode called Tree of Hearts where um, Daggett and uh, Norman are reading the mail, and it says, "Hey." Hey, Daggett, look at this. Richard Horvitz had a baby boy, Jake Elliott, born April 11th. And Daggett goes, yay, who's Richard Horvitz? And Norman <laughs> goes, yes, nobody. And um, that Jake Elliott is now 23 years old. He just wow. turned 23. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, Dean, you've done some voice work. You did some regular show stuff. You did some stuff on We Bear Bears. Yeah. So... Yeah, I, 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 my voiceover, my voiceover stuff was uh, through the two thousands uh, and a lot of commercial stuff. I was either the wry voice uh, when they couldn't afford Adam Carolla, or the very calming, soothing voice of reason when we needed to make sure everything was okay. Like the first big gig I had was after the California blackouts in the early two thousands. I was for I was the voice of PG and E going, everything's okay. We're all okay. Just your lights are gonna be off for a while, but that's okay. So that, that was... <laughs> We're here think, to provide you candles. Yeah. Uh, I think I think nationally we could use a soothing voice, right? I think now. we could. I think we could. Right. You know, <laughs> you know uh, Governor Cuomo needs to take a, a rest every couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because those, those those press conferences, I appreciate them, but they go on and on. Oh and my God. We hear about his daughters. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> is that the guy they're not going to let out of the basement ever? He's just yeah, no, that's the, the, the brother. That's yeah. Chris oh, that's the brother. Yeah. Well, the brother had yeah. it, and his wife got it. Now oh his wife God. has it. Yeah. They're just floating around that house. Yeah. <laughs> So now he's just living in the basement, like trolling online. Yeah, yeah. So, so Richard, you're 
you've had an interesting career because you've, like I said, you have the summer school fandom, and then you you're a part of the greater Power Rangers fandom, which is yeah. myriad and huge at so many levels. And and yeah, I think what last count there's like ninety Power Rangers, and <laughs> and that and that's just the Power Rangers. This doesn't include the 90, other voices. Ninety. I think something there's like yeah. twenty-seven. Is Orange Boys that? okay? All right. The last time I asked one of the Power Rangers, I said, "How many of them are you?" I, this was actually about three years ago. So yeah, it's probably no, it's, there's so many of them. So. It depends on it depends on when their uh, contract negotiations are up. That's how many how many Power Rangers there it are. Depends on, it depends. Well, on who has time for a raise? I and yeah. and so, with some of I did was always a one and done. I always had the the question. So what was it like when you saw your action figure at the stores? And they always say, "I was already done with the show." Right. <laughs> I think really it's a out. little it's a little known fact, but um, Alpha Five is the only original character in the entire Mighty Morphin series that's in really? every single episode from beginning to end of of Mighty Morphin and then into Turbo. Wow. Yeah, good so, on you. Yeah, that's it's like just, English. But I, yeah, 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 it's 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 a fandom. You have to okay, know. Cool. Good yeah. enough. You're not you're, you're not missing anything. So Dean, I saw you. Last year, I think you were on an episode of Always Sunny. Uh, I think it's like probably two years ago. Yes, two years ago. Yeah, and that was a great spot. Oh my god! You know that I've been a huge fan of that show ever since it's been on, and they wrote that part for me, and they were the coolest. I, I, I speechless, literally speechless. It was just a great experience for me. Had that had that come about? Uh, they called up and said, "When I." We wrote this ski thing for Always Sunny and sent me the script. I, I read it and I was like, I don't think they're completely making fun of me. I think I think I come out of this okay. So I, I went up and did it. And Psych had done something sort of similar a couple yeah, of years ago. And this is the thing about Psych. Andy Berman, who is the creator and executive producer of Psych, was Dib on Invader Zim. And he does this whole reference about Dean Cameron of Summer School. Right. And yeah, he doesn't put me on the show. Right. There'd been an there'd been an episode where they where the plot point was that the bad guy had been watching a double feature of summer school and ski school on on the show. And then they talk about Dean Cameron. And then years years later, they on the very last episode they shot, they, you know, James Roday was this big 80s fan, so he finally got me on on the show. But yeah, but always sunny was just a great experience. Like, yeah, it's great. What can you say? Those guys are geniuses. That was a brilliant. It was a brilliant episode. Yeah. All right. So, so um, when you guys go to these conventions, Dean, um, you know you've got, um, you know, you've got all these people who come up to you because they're nostalgic for you, or they're like they're a fan of your thing. Is there anyone that you've met at one of these shows that you're like, oh, that's really cool. That's an awesome guy. That you know. Uh, yes, and I just forgot his name. He played bass for Ozzy Osbourne. Um, and everyone else. Um, can we Google <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne's bass player? I met him. That was amazing. Uh, Patty's gonna figure it's it been, out. There's been there's been a couple, but there's been know. a lot. But he was back in the like. Run me some names, Patty. Uh, Robert Tujulo. No, not Robert Tujulo. No. Uh, Early. Bob Daisley. No, after Bob Daisley. Oh, Rudy. Rudy Sarzo, yes. Right, Sarzo. right, 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 right. Yes, yes. and he has everything. That was yeah, cool. it, yeah, quite right. Yeah. yeah. Paul McCartney. He's a bassist, right? He is a bassist, yes. Okay. God, whatever happened to him? I don't know. If only he tried harder. That's a tough <laughs> oh, wait. He, he did he tried he went into a veganism for a while. That's what yes. What about you, Richard? Oh no, I'm not a vegan. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Leo. If he was, you would have known about it. Yeah. You've been excited to meet anyone at any of these shows? Oh, yeah. You know. You know who it is. It was Lee Majors, uh, the $6 million dollar man. Yeah. Uh, it was the night before we were supposed to be there, and Mike had sent me our table list of who we're sitting next to. And uh, I said to Kristen, my wife, I said, oh, my gosh, I'm sitting next to Lee Majors. And um, I go to the green room just before we're about to take our uh, our booths and there's Lee and I said I, I just want to tell you I'm a huge fan I mean I was fanboying like left and right and he goes oh are you a six million dollar man fan I said yes but truly I'm a bigger fan of Heath Barkley from the Big Valley 
And he said, oh, you mean the one that plays every single day in every single country and I make no residuals on? <laughs> uh, I actress. said, yes, that one. But that Richard, was my big one. Richard, you got to tell me, before we do a show, like a couple weeks before a show, yeah, like three, four weeks, okay. you got to look at the guest list. Yeah. And you got to tell me who you want to sit next to. Okay. Yeah, because I was like, a, I mean, I became buddies with Lee. It was like the best weekend. Oh. Um, at, at one point, because people come up to my table and uh, they, you know, when they come up to my table, I do my voices. Like, oh, will you do Alpha? Or will you do Zim? Or, yeah, and I'll do it. At one point, Lee leans over and he goes, hey, Richard, if uh, you keep doing your voices for free, people are going to expect me to run in slow motion for free. <laughs> and I said, well, Lee, you're 78. I mean, you don't have a choice. <laughs> I sat next to uh, I sat next to Dan Diane Franklin for an entire weekend once, an entire weekend, Friday through Sunday, the whole weekend. And then in the airport, on the way back, I was like, "Hey, how you doing?" She's like, "Hi, nice to see you." Like, like I was a fan or something, and I went, "I was, I was sitting next to you for the weekend." She goes, oh, oh, what's your name? I'm like, uh, it's all right, it's all right, never mind. That's, that's like, uh, what's her name, uh, Mike from uh, Rocky Horror? Oh, Patricia Quinn. Yes, she <laughs> never remembers Ricky Simons. Well, never. you listen, we love Patricia. <laughs> yes, I love we Patricia. Do. We do. But Patricia doesn't remember a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know that Patricia remembers me. <laughs> I think she's done about six or eight shows with me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I don't know that she knows who I am. I know who you are. Well, that's all that matters. I know, I know. She, and she always has this pixie-ish quality to her. Oh, hello. Yes. Are you, are you going to take me to my place? Oh, and my and she's always dressed in her magenta, right? Isn't right. it? Was it magenta? Is that her spider? Or... Well, no, she's not dressed in a costume, but she dresses... She, she, she has, she this, has right? She has this wonderfully, she embraces her eccentricities. And yeah. she's this wonderful, dotty uh, English wine box yes. fan that, uh, yes. that, you, that you wish we were, you were related to. Right. So I, I've enjoyed sitting with her. I've enjoyed sitting with Lee Major. I sat with him several times. Uh, nice guy, right? He's absolutely nice. he's great. great. Yeah, yeah he, he loved it how I would shorthand things to him because his hearing's a little off. So I translate to him. Somebody comes to the microphone and, oh, the, the, the Bigfoot and everything else, and blah, blah. And he leaned over me, what do you want? And I say, Bigfoot story. Oh, yeah, Bigfoot. Andrew the Giant. Great, yeah, great, yeah, great. Yeah, go right I, I have a question for you, Mike. Have you tried to get uh, Mickey Dolans and Mike Nesmith? Because I know they were doing. I haven't. Uh, I haven't had that uh, yet. That would be a get for me because I'm a huge monkeys fan. I saw them in concert twice. All right. Write that down. I'm writing it down. <laughs> write it down. Right, yeah. Right. You, you, I'm you, writing that down, Richard. Write it down. Richard, you know, Richard can tell you when I write down notes. He does keep them. He gets them. You know, a couple of days later, pop figure show up at Richard's house. That's that's true. <laughs> that pop figure right behind me. It's right there. That's it. Nice. Maybe. So, what's what's been for you guys? Uh, uh, what's been uh, a, a moment at at the tables with a fan that uh, that's resonated with you? That you just really somebody just really just had a story to share with you that that's uh, you really took to heart. Well, I've had two people uh, show up with rock this rockula batwing costume that has rock eula and bat wings and they've made this whole thing awesome. and that is hugely touching and one guy showed up with a friend and they were dressed as chainsaw and dave and uh and that was like my first convention when, when that happened and I, I thought this is very very cool so I, those those resonated with me a lot awesome yeah um well like we have some friends in here who came up to our table at our at our Richmond convention. Uh, Harrington M. Lilana and her family uh, came up, and um, the kids all they all the whole family dressed in Zim, which was nice. And the kids wow. dressed as Gur and uh, and Zim, and it it was a lot of fun. But I think I've shared this story before. But I think the thing that always uh, moves me the most is uh, when I'm at a table and a soldier comes up and. Uh, and they come up and they say, I just want to let you know that, you know, I was over and, you know, I was in Iraq or I was in first Iraq or I was in, uh, you know, I was in Afghanistan and I was, you know, saw a lot of really bad action there. And it was, it was, it was horrible, but 
my father and my mother sent me my DVD collection of Invader Zim, and it was the only thing that made us laugh or smile again. And um, that's like, it, it just moves you because um, same with people who've had, who've been in the hospital said I was battling cancer. I was something in your show made me laugh and I would watch it. It's the only thing that would make me laugh. Those things move me like beyond belief because as I said before, you're in a, in a dark room with like, you know, if you're lucky, the whole cast and you're just laughing, you're making each other laugh, you're having a good time. And you don't realize how far it's reaching in the world, like in the world, I've been all over the world and, and it, it's been the same. And um, that makes you feel in a way that you're, you're contributing in some way. And, and one of the reasons that Dean and I do this, some kind of joke is because like, even during this, this time, we still need to laugh. You know, we still need to laugh and it makes yeah. us laugh and we hope we're bringing laughter to well, so, other people. You know, it's funny, Richard, because the, the people that I meet are just like, I was so wasted when I was watching. I know. Was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> very That's different. moving. That's very, very moving. Very moving. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, I still have that Iron Maiden shirt, man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so speaking of making people laugh during this time, um, some kind of joke. We have a, a, a clip we're going to show. Producer Steve, can you set it up? Producer Steve. Producer Steve. Producer Steve is working. On, oh, look at that! Oh, magic! Hey, so, all right. Good. So we're gonna we're gonna do a setup. So this is episode five, called Tradition, um, and each one of these are like a minute and a half to like two two and a half minute, you know, vignettes, and. Uh, What's uh, anything you want to say before we start this? Uh, these are just the ideas that Dean and I work out every week, and we we have a, a set list that we're going to do during the week, and this is one of them. Oh, and the conceit is each episode, it's two brothers yeah. who start talking on Zoom, right. and they have this Zoom chat every you know every day, yeah. and uh, so it's the same format. Right. And uh, all right, so producer Steve, take it away. I don't see you. I'm here. It's always, I always have a, oh, there you are. I just have a problem connecting, I'm sorry. Here we are. Here we are. April 10th. April 10th. I'm sorry we couldn't do this in person. Yeah, me too. But you know, we're doing it, right? Tradition. Yes, we're keeping the tradition alive. Right. He was a good man. He was, he was a, he was a good man, Fredo. And you know what? He had two great sons. That's very sweet. That's true. Fredo, you're a good man. And you're a good man, Michael. Thanks. Let's do this. To dad. To dad. Thank you. I keep thinking about that last day. I'll never forget his final words. Yeah, boy, you don't need to. Hold the ladder still, Fredo, you idiot! <laughs> to dad. To dad. Every year. Does that every year? Why? I can hear you, Michael. Excuse me for having fond memories. <laughs> Richard Horvitz, ladies and gentlemen. Richard Horvitz. He's gambling. <laughs> yeah. He was about to start the Tiger King episode next. That's a good one. Tiger King is a good one also. I admit. So I, I binged the first, uh, I think a couple days ago, I binged the first eight or so and and I've had to, you know, go to your Facebook page every day to <laughs> to see the new one. We got another one coming out today. Coming out today. Oh, coming nice. out today. Yeah. Cool. And so now we're so people can find this on YouTube. Yeah. YouTube it's, slash some kind of joke. Some YouTube, kind of yes. joke. Some kind of joke. Or on Richard's Instagram or my Instagram. Yeah. But. You know, but ultimately, we'd love to get subscribers to our channel so yeah. that if you can subscribe to the channel, that would help us a lot. I'd appreciate it. Richard would appreciate it. I would appreciate it. So would Dean, right? Dean? I would appreciate it, yes. Thank you. Uh, hey, Remember Patty, to subscribe and hit the bell. Speaking of a Dean directing and writing, 
Uh, did he tell you about his play that he's doing, his live broadcast? This oh, right. Week? No, let's hear about that, please. Oh, yeah. Uh, so years ago, uh, I, I started corresponding with a Nigerian scammer. Oh, I read about this. Yeah, and so I, I, cor I corresponded with him for about a year, and then and then a couple years later, uh, but I turned it into a two-person show with me and this guy named Victor Isaac, and we've toured it around the world. We did the Just for Last Festival. Oh, wow. Um, we did Edinburgh two years in a row. Uh, we toured all over the country with it. It's called the Nigerian Spam Scam Scam, and we're doing it <laughs> this Saturday at 2 p.m. Pacific time uh, on Zoom. Although I'm looking at StreamYard and it seems <laughs> like this is a better platform for us because we can control who the things are. So we'll have to research that. Well, we, but, can, we can, I can, uh, any questions you have about StreamYard, Steve, and I can help you out. That would be great. Let's hear yeah. it for Steve. Let's, Let's hear it for Steve. Steve, Steve, yeah. is, Steve yes. Wood, ladies and gentlemen. StreamYard is better. Um, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, we're. we're yeah, because we have because it's just two of us and we share slides and stuff. So anyway, we, we but yeah, no. but I I, uh, I spent the, I spent a year and I called the guy on the phone. I sent him packages to Nigeria uh, full of just crap. Uh, <laughs> Used the guy and I ended up I ended up getting a check from him for three dollars and fifty cents. So if you want to see how that happens. Um, this this Saturday at two p.m. It's wow. a true story. It's and it's all true. I absolutely it's, believe it. Yeah, it's all it's all true. That's awesome. I, I'm, yeah. I'm 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 amazed that the the guy at the other end kept going for that long. Well, this was this was about two thousand four. So it was be it was before everyone in the United States got hip to the scammers, and before all the scammers got hip to all the scam baiters. So right, it was yeah. a nice thing. I like to think that there's a guy in Nigeria who's got a show about this crazy American. Because uh, <laughs> yeah. I was writing as as this sexually confused millionaire in Florida with a house <laughs> with a house boy named Quan who may have been underage and stolen from the Philippines or not, and. It was just this guy was just crazy enough and wealthy enough to fall for the scam. So I would say, yeah, I'm going to send you the money. But first, here's a picture of my cats. What do you think of my cats? <laughs> and uh, so that, but and then at one point, a friend of so there's a big Nigerian ex, expat community in Amsterdam, and that's where a lot of the scams originate from. Oh. And so a friend of mine was traveling to Amsterdam and I got him to call the guy in <laughs> Amsterdam from a payphone, and he left a very detailed message about, uh, about the stuff we were talking about. So it increased my credibility and it was, it was great. It really helped me out. So. Yeah. Wow. So, and when, when is this, what is this? Saturday, again? Saturday 2 PM. Saturday, Saturday 2 PM. If you go to my Facebook, Dean Cameron or my Twitter, Dean Cameron, I'll have links and stuff like that. Right. So, yeah. I, 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 uh, I, I don't know that I have the, um, the patience to go that far, <laughs> but I've, I've gotten a couple of Facebook, like somebody like will copy a page of a friend of mine and then they'll be like, you know, they'll add me as a thing. And then it's that, Hey, can you send me some money? I'm stuck in right. another country and, I tell, right, yes. and I'll be, and I'll play that along for a little while. Like you son of a bitch after what you did <laughs> to my right. sister. And then just drag that out for a while. Right, right. Um, but they'll play along for a while. Yeah, it's it's tougher now because now that they're hit to because there's this, there was this subculture they're called scam baiters of people like myself. Yeah. Uh, so now all the scammers they have a boilerplate of about twelve emails that they just send out one after another, and if you don't reply to them, you're gone. They'll just go on the next person. So. Yeah, I remember them. I think about nine months ago, I got like the the weird one saying it reversed engineered my webcam and was observing what I was doing and claimed to have spotted me doing things. And right. I was like, I don't have a webcam what, hooked what up. Were you, what were you doing, Patty? <laughs> Uh, this, uh, we said this is a PG-13 show. I can't oh, okay. hear <laughs> Oops. But uh, Fabby may have had something to do with it. Yeah, all I know is that you, for some reason, you invested in Bitcoin, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> you fool, you didn't? I still haven't got my Bitcoin. I'm investing in oil. Oh. Yeah, good, good choice. Good time to invest in oil. You know, oil futures, I hear, are on the, are on the rise. Yes. 
<laughs> um, Dean, what's the nerdiest thing about you? Uh, I like a band called Marillion. You no, also, I, yeah, Mer, Mer, in, in your respect, Marillion is like there with like a fish and stuff of this way. And, and, and yeah, but the weird thing is, I knew a Marillion, but then when Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden like mentioned he was a huge fan of them, then, oh. then all of a sudden I got into them. And yeah, I, yeah, right on. I'm with you, brother. I'm with cool. you. Um, Dean also directed uh, videos for Steel Panther. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did read that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And a pilot and all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. Bastards. <laughs> There's no bad blood, though. <laughs> There's nothing nerdy about me, Mike. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Look, <laughs> we know about you, Horvitz. <laughs> I mean, Carl, Ry Carl Ryder <laughs> figured you from the day one. You told us that story. Horvitz, the nerd thought, oh, yeah. about you, where do we start? Yeah, he called yeah. me He called I'll me the here. new Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> you want to be here for nine hours? <laughs> My nerdiness. What, all right, what is the nerdiest thing about you, Richard? Well, okay. I could tell. Well, let me, okay, let me tell right. you. Actually, the nerdiest thing about Richard is that he's not nerdy. I have to explain all the computer stuff to him. I call him Grandpa because he doesn't oh, know. Like, what, what's this on my cell phone? How do you do that? I'm like, he doesn't know anything. He's just Grandpa. So I'm Grandpa. But that's that's I, what I think. So that's true. No nerdy. I well, I'll tell you that I've I've recently started uh, collecting all the toys that I had when I was growing up. Okay. So recently, I've become obsessed. Like, if you look behind me, that. It's called a Verdi bird. Do you remember the Verdi bird? I'll show you what it does. Watch it. Go get it over. Watch. All right, be great, you guys. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Sit down. You stay right there, mister. <laughs> You're going nowhere. He's your buddy, and you vouch for him. I see Richard is uh, wearing sandals today. Oh, I remember those. Did you see it? Yeah, we, yes. You know, Did you see me crash into the thing? I yes. think Dean lost it. Do you remember the Verdi bird? Anyone? I do. Okay. I you do. don't remember the Verdi bird? Okay. So I started collecting that, and then I got a, a, my 1968 uh, Mattel Hot Wheels Sprint Track with the car wash that had the the, yeah. the spitting things that shot the car, and I yeah. just bought that car. I'll, I'll show you a car that I bought. It's a it's an original Redline Hot Wheels. Stay right there, Dean. Stay right there. <clears throat> oh, nice. Oh. Very, very expensive. Wasn't that the car in Jackass? Say that again? Wasn't that the car in Jackass? That he... <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Why is, yes. it, why is it wrapped up? Because it's expensive. You know how much the, uh, an official Red Lines Hot Wheel car costs from 1968? No. Tell us. mint condition, how much? Five or six hundred dollars for one. Now, do you want you want to tell them about my office, uh, Richard? You mentioned yeah. that you're you were getting all the toys that you yes. had as a kid and lost. Yeah. Mike superseded that at the office. Now he gets the toys that he wanted oh. To, oh. as a kid, but yeah. didn't exist. So. Wow. He's got a, ma a massive Mego collection, and over the years, there have wow. been customizers who have done uh, new characters in the Mego style. So, wow. but he's half the fun is displaying them. So, like the Mego Star Trek, you know, Romulan or the or the Neptunian. Yeah, they're expensive. Uh, they are, but you yeah. keep them, and you gotta you gotta show them. You got plenty. I agree. Richard. Well, yeah, I'm playing with my 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 Verdi bird. I mean, you just saw me crash it three times, but I will say this: um, I am obsessed with finding something that is very difficult to find right now. You can find them; they're not they're broken. If you want them for parts, well, it, it's not that hard to find weed. No, no, that I can find. That I found. I, in fact, I'm, I'm eating it right now. A film but, career. A film <laughs> career. Yes, a film career is later. Right um, do you remember 1960s, early 60s to mid 60s, went all the way to the 80s, the GE show and tell phono viewer? And what it was was it was oh, a yes. TV set, yes. it had a record player on top, yes. and a film strip in there, yes. and, it, and it was like just a slideshow. 
Yeah. But it was also a 1633, uh, 45, and 78 turntable. Yeah. So yeah. you can find them on eBay, but they're usually something's broken about them. And right. um, but it's called the GE Phono Viewer. I'm looking for a, a good one. Hmm. That's you want to know why I'm nerdy? That's my nerd. <laughs> That's the only I, thing that's nerdy about me. Cool. The, the the next time we're all at a show together, I yes. I, I try to cruise the, the the vendor room as quickly as I can, and I will keep an eye out for you. Perfect. Thank yes. you. We will Thank look you. for that. Excellent. You know the one thing I got to get. There's one thing, Patty. I don't have. What's that? It's not that hard to find. They're kind of common. I just never found one that oh. I, I never. Uh, it's fair. I mean, uh, Sandy would get upset. I think <laughs> not a girlfriend, but you know, she would. Uh, maybe she'd understand. <laughs> All right, listen. I'm drinking my drink and saying nothing. <laughs> She's uh, sorry. It, no, it's too easy. It's, 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 it's all right. You won't let me bring the toys home. No, we're talking about my office. I'm, I, I think I have like two pop figures in the house. Um, it's all I'm allowed. The uh, the Flintstones had a big uh, dinosaur with that Fred would ride. Yeah, and it was it was like a remote control thing. Yeah, and I think it's late sixties. That's the piece I gotta get. Is that the one mm. that he did? He wrote at work. Yeah. The, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then it's, when the whistle blew, he slides down its yeah, tail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he rides his big, you know, wow. thing. So and then wow. you can remote control it. Ah, you gotta good. find one that the remote control works, and you gotta find one that you know. The toy, the toy I had when I was a kid that I loved was this thing called. Uh, there was a show called Winky Dink and You. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. And I begged my mom for that, and we finally got it. And it was there was this cartoon, and he would have these adventures, but then he would need you to help him. And so you had this plastic piece you put over the, the TV screen, and you would draw like he needed steps, and you would draw steps on your TV screen. Oh so yeah. He could draw up the steps oh and stuff like that. yeah. That yeah. was super cool. And because they were geniuses, because. Parents had to buy them because every kid was drawing on the TV with their crayons. So you had to get the, the winky dink set. Yeah, early. yeah. It was like I early, that was early 60s. I remember, you know, before, I grew up- Way before I was born. I know, way yeah. before. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember, um, you know, I, I grew up on Sid and Marty Croft. I think we've, we've spoken about this before, but I was a huge, you know, Lidsville and HR Puff and stuff and loved it. And I remember when we were doing Billy and Mandy, they said, we got a surprise for you. And they brought on Billy Hayes and Billy Hayes played Witchy Poo right. on and yeah. also played Weenie on Lidsville. Yep. And I was, again, fanboying <laughs> like I did for Lee Majors. And I'll never forget it because I just did my Charles Nelson Riley for I was like, Oh, hello, weenie. Oh, and she's like, um, oh, I wish Charles could see that. You know, Charles and Alice Ghostly and myself, we all share a, a same a birthday in the same week. So we always get together for, for dinner and we're, we're meeting next week. I said, oh, I would love to go. And she says, oh, no, honey, you're not invited. So... <laughs> The, uh, oh, I was supposed to, uh, uh, and it's still on the horizon. Uh, eventually, I'm supposed to do a cosplay. Uh, I'm going to do hoodoo, and a friend of mine is going to do witchy food. Oh, that would be <laughs> awesome. And I've, and I've, got to, I've got the opportunity to sit with uh, Butch, and of course, you know, oh, he told, yeah. he told me about, Butch, yeah. yeah, he's told me all about Lidsville, about how Charles Delsa Riley was all like, oh, Butch, I love you. Just kidding. No. Or am I? <laughs> 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 um, someone just said that we needed a summer school Funko Pop, and here's an interesting uh, thing: Dean has an action figure of Chainsaw. Yeah, this guy, uh, uh, what it's called, Death by Toys, and he, I think he's on Instagram, Death by Toys. He makes these action figures as a hobby. Sure. And and he said, "Hey, I made a chainsaw action figure." And I put it on Facebook, and people went insane. So I commissioned him to. I think he made ten of them. Wow! And I overpriced them so much and sold them. Uh, my, kid, my kid goes to private school, so. Um, <laughs> over, over the back door. So uh, yeah, so they're yeah they're these chainsaw action figures that I think they're online somewhere, but they're I don't have one. I don't I don't have one. But yeah, they were cool. Very cool. Yeah. Hey, Stuart Fratkin is watching. So oh, hey, Stuart. 
So I did a, sh a TV show called They Came From Outer Space with this guy. And yeah. he was also in ski school. He played Fitz in ski school. And he was also the second version of Styles in, uh, in uh, Team Wolf. He was in Team Wolf 2, Electric Boogaloo. So and, I, and these guys said that, holy crap, you all need a life? That's we need right. a life, yes. Right, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Stuart. Nice Stuart, to meet you, Stuart, too. Stuart, you all need a life. Stuart, you don't like our toys? Yeah. Up here. Glad you're enjoying the show, Stuart. <laughs> Stuart, Stuart was also in Dickhead Fireman. That's right. He okay. Yeah. Awesome. So, Richard. Yeah. Um, so a couple of the surviving cast members have been out of splits. Yes. I'm starting to do sh conventions. Really? So the guy who was repping Gilbert Gottfried yes. when Gilbert was in Richmond was telling me that he's, he's I think he's supposed to bring them the chiller. Wow. And, uh, so tra -la -la, tra -la -la -la. there's three of them. Um, yeah. So after the great career crash of 1995, I went to Las Vegas and I worked at Caesar's Palace as a singing uh, magician at a thing called um, Caesar's Magical Empire. And one of the people I worked with was one of the original Banana Splits. Wow. I forgot his name, but he was a little, old, little guy. And he Orbitz was, would have driven out. What? Orbitz I, would have driven to Vegas. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But he was, I, I realized he was, Interestingly, both Dean and I found our, our careers in Vegas because he, oh, he right. was there doing his show and I was playing Mo Howard of the Three Stooges at the MGM Grand when it reopened with the theme park. So Oof. I was playing the Three Stooges, you know, six shows a day, five days a week. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, Gotta eat. What are you I doing here? Know. Why are you in? Uh, I just it's a I don't know. Just yeah, no. <laughs> it's it's a it's a gig. It's a gig. It's a gig. It's a gig. So I, uh, we did a magic act. I mean, was this like the big elaborate stage magic, or were you doing some sleight of hand? No, it was a. I was <laughs> literally singing about try the veal. Okay. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a pretty cool. It was a very cool venue. Um, it's online. There's a Caesar's Magical Empire, but it was, okay. it was, it was basically a singing waiter. So yeah, hey, hey, no. you know, <laughs> I, I I did a music, I did music park work for 13 years. So oh, I, yeah. I, got, yeah. I got both Patty, you guys that. Patty, yeah, worked, yeah. Patty worked for uh, the uh, Walt Disney World. Oh, I've heard of that. I've heard of that. Yeah, in, in yeah. the Monsters Inc. Oh, attraction. Yeah. As uh. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm in my fifties, but I played a six-year-old for thirteen uh, for thirteen years. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dean, one of Dean's best friends, he met in Vegas. Yeah, I mean, it it was good. It, it ended up. Uh, well, I, I'd known him before, but yeah, became, oh, okay. I ended up living with, at Penn Jillette's house, and and oh, oh right, Penn Penn uh, uh, produced uh, uh, something with you, right? Yes, uh, yeah, the the joke one, right? The um, Aristocrats. The aristocrats. The aristocrats. Yeah, aristocrats. I, on, I mean, Aristocrats was just, it was all shot on, on, you know, consumer cameras. So if you were around and they said, oh, Carlin, Carlin said, yes, let's go. You grab the camera and go. And oh, nice. For Carlin and, and, right. You, you, they, uh, Dean, you were, I guess you were a, um, a camera guy on Aristocrats, yeah, right? Aristocrats, yeah. And, yeah. Um, and then you shot a bunch of kind of not stuff that was for a separate uh, Rich Kratz Live stuff, I read. Oh, well, sort of. When we did uh, when we did Nigerian Spam Scam in, in Edinburgh, we shot a live version of the Aristocrats joke, um, which I, if you don't know the Aristocrats joke, rent the movie The Aristocrats or <clears throat> stream it. It's classic. Uh, so we did a live version and uh, that was going to go on the DVD of The Aristocrats, but... Ultimately, one person said, "I can't. I won't. I won't sign a release." So it it it's it's it just history. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I um, I had to explain the aristocrats joke to a very devout Mormon friend of mine who can't handle profanity or <laughs> okay. that stuff. So I I like, and then the guy goes, and they said the stuff and this and that, and I talk, I explained it. It's a tempo joke. You build, right. you build, you build, you build. What are you going to say? Aristocrats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, the great the, the thing about the aristocrats is it, 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 Penn says this in the movie. It's it's the singer, not the song. So it's yeah, it, it's jazz. So if you take yes. you take the joke and you make it your own. I mean, Carlin's yeah. version is very different than Drew Carey's version. Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's a it's a great it's a great movie about comedy. The that card the card playing card, card version of it I was really taken with. Which one? The playing card. The guy. Oh yes, the card. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Some good stuff. Good. Yeah. So, uh, what's uh, <clears throat> before we go, real quick, what would be the what would be the dream project for you guys? If uh, somebody says, "Here's a big bag of money, uh, do whatever you want to, just have it with us to us in nine months to a year." I think okay. you, you go ahead, go ahead, Dean. I I want to direct television. That's all I want to do. I'd like to I'd like to produce, write, and direct, and and star in a movie that we collaborated on. We work together well. We collaborate. Um, so I'd probably like to do that. I'd like to spend a couple months, not pro probably not like, I mean, Dean and I have written in a room together for a, a TV pilot that yeah. was fun. We like the writer's room a lot. So yeah, yeah. we do like the writer's room. So yeah. I think that's probably, if it's a big bag of money, it would probably be, I'd probably buy a convention. <laughs> and not, not in these days. Not in these days. <laughs> More. You want to be in the live events business for me? <laughs> no, the dead <laughs> events. <laughs> 50,000 people in a building. Oof. You think they're going to let me do that this year? Maybe, maybe in Florida, yeah. <laughs> uh, the problem so, is we're not in Florida oh, anymore. Richard, I sold oh, that. That's right. That's right. You're not. I forgot. Yeah, I got yeah but you will be in Richmond, Virginia. <laughs> next year in March. Yeah. Well, what's the next one? You I got know, Raleigh and Raleigh. Raleigh Raleigh's a good one. Raleigh. They're not going to let me have 50,000 people. No. Not, no. not this year. If they let me do anything, I'm gonna. My attendance is gonna be, you know, a sliver. Yeah, a sliver. Mm. That if, if. So, mm. uh, you know, we'll uh, we'll see. Well, uh, you you know what? We'll see. We'll see. We'll figure it out. We'll <laughs> Corona Con. Corona Con. <laughs> That's what Stephanie Walker wrote. Corona Con. <laughs> It's a convention. Uh, it's a convention. <laughs> we. Uh, so I got. I have one last question about Rockula. Um, <laughs> and, and, did you ever uh, interact with Golan and Globus, the producers? No, but no, but uh, beautiful Italian women would show up on the set saying that they had a part in the yeah. movie, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and the director would go. Oh, okay. And then they go and they like do a line and they just shoot a single so they didn't have to cut them into anything. And then the, the girls would leave and then we'd go on with the day. That was that was my experience with Golan and Globus. So and that is perfect. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, to anyone what? who knows anything about Golan and Globus. Thank you, Stuart. Perfect. Stuart liked my, my joke. Thank you, Stuart. I had, I had worked with the guy who started <laughs> Canon Films, and then he had sold it to Golden and Globus. Yeah. So for years, I got to hear all these stories about, you know, these two crazy guys. And uh, what you just said pretty much fits the bill. Well, did, you ever read, did you ever read the, the, the book about uh, the making of uh, uh, the, Buk uh, the Bukowski movie? And uh, the Barbe Schroeder going, in, going into them with a, 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 a hedge trimmer. And threatening to cut his fingers off if they didn't give him the money to finish to finish Barfly. Barfly, yeah, yeah, it's a, an amazing story uh, and true, totally true story. So if you don't give me this money because they kept saying, "Oh, we're going to make the movie. We're not going to make the movie. We're going to make the movie." And finally, Barbie showed one of the hedge trimmer and said, "I'm going to cut my fingers off on your desk if you don't give me the money." They said, "Okay, okay, okay, we'll give you the money." I hadn't heard. I hadn't. I haven't read the book. It's a great. It's, it's a, a book. great. great. <clears throat> That's uh, that's yeah. I'll, that's it's a, Buka a Bukowski book called Hollywood, and it, it sort of talks about the. I love Bukowski. I mean, I have. I mean, more goddamn Bukowski books than you can. Than uh, than Horvitz has. Uh, you we know, all did. We were all Matchbox cars. Point, yeah. <laughs> Hot. We all went through that phase. Hot <laughs> Wheels. I'm Hot sorry. Wheels. Not I'm matchbox. sorry. Not I'm matchbox. sorry. Hot You're wheels. right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's like someone calling Spider Man a DC character. I'm yeah, sorry. <laughs> How can you not love Bukowski? Of, of all the beat poets, he's the straight I love one. Bukowski, yeah. He's the drinker. He's not, you know, chasing little boys. I you know, it's, it's he's he's the. 
you know, hey, Jack Kerouac, I think of your mother. Yeah, but then you start thinking about those stories with Ginsburg and you know, Ginsburg. you know, chasing after that's, Kerouac. That's way and, before my time, you people. I I, I was born in '93, so. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pop my cup and tip my cup. Um, <laughs> all right, so I think we've kept you gentlemen long enough. Um, <laughs> That's a right oh. way of saying we have overstayed our welcome team. No, I think we've overstayed. No, we, we, yeah, we could go. We could go this all night. Uh, but uh, what uh, what social media outlets can we follow you guys on? Uh, on on MySpace. <laughs> I got no way to Aren't you on Friendster? It's GeoCities one eight one one one. Thor forty four slash nine nine nine. Cool. My AOL homepage is nice. Darth yeah. Vader six six six. Listen, uh, Patty, I saw your profile and love at AOL. <laughs> uh, you can find us at um, YouTube.com. Some kind of joke. Uh, we also have YouTube.com slash Dickhead Fireman, and uh, you can find me at uh, at Richard Horvitz VO. Uh, Twitter at Richard Horvitz and uh, there and our Richard Horvitz VO.com. You can uh, you, you do the uh, voiceover classes. Uh, well, if voiceover is uh, you can go to Richard Horvitz.com and go to coaching. Yeah, Richard Horvitz.com. And I'm on uh, Instagram, I'm the Dean Cameron, but everything else just Dean Cameron. This Facebook Dean Cameron. Yeah, when we started, when we started posting the um. The uh, some kind of joke. The some kind of joke. I kept saying at Dean Cameron, at Dean Cameron, till finally I got a thing from Dean Cameron. Hey, I'm not Dean Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when there's a doctor on the East Coast whose name is Richard Horvitz, and finally one day he he, he contacted me and he said, "You know, I am a very prestigious doctor. <laughs> I'm very successful. I, I donate millions of dollars, but your fans will not stop harassing me." <laughs> so, okay, the new episode uh, of Joke is tonight. Some yes. kind of joke tonight. Some kind of joke tonight, Saturday. Uh, we're gonna do two the uh, streaming two o'clock. Uh, Nigerian spam scam. Right. And uh, do you guys have any other looming projects on the horizon that you, you may be allowed to tell us about? If we ever get out of this stay at home thing, we will. I've got a, apparently a commercial I did for Cox Communication just started running yesterday. So that's good. All right. Right on. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Thank All you, right. everyone. Gentlemen, we'll see you backstage in a moment. And see you uh, backstage. Don't go anywhere. Steve, Steve take us out of here. Everyone, thanks again for tuning in to GalaxyCon Live. Make sure to check out our online store at galaxycon.myshopify.com where you can find t-shirts, signed and certified Funko Pops, autographs, collectibles, and more. For updates on the upcoming streams, visit us on Facebook at GalaxyCon Live or galaxycon.com.